sound speeds. And in this video, we're going to do more reaction videos from Facebook. Now, in the previous video, I did a bunch of boom operator videos, and those came from most likely professional boom operator forums. There was a couple of goofy ones in there, and those probably came from something like WTF or you booming, but they were mostly from pro, pro forums. But in this video, I'm going to react to other sound related videos that I've been sent over the course of time and or been linked to or happen to maybe find for myself. And then I save them, put them on my computer and then promptly forget about them when they're in a certain folder with miscellaneous names. For example, I'm looking at one right now. It's called Studio. Another one is called Cleaning. They're sound related because they're in my sound related video form but, uh, folder, but I have no idea what these things are. So why don't we not talk anymore and jump right into the reactions? Okay, four girls singing. Why would I have saved this? Good grief. What are they even saying? I, uh, I, are you going to be good? Oh my God. I, you know, this is one of the things I really appreciated about American Idol. Simon Cowell was not the least bit afraid to tell people that have been told their entire life, you have talent. Uh, no, you suck. I mean, the girl in the bottom left, her face kind of says it all. Let's go on to the next one and get out of this one. Oh, Joy, another TikTok video. Oh, this is from the Super Bowl. Oh, this is from the Super Bowl in early 2022. Oh, this is the sound. This is when Snoop and Dre and everybody did the halftime show. This is what it sounded like, it says. Yeah, I see Dre up on on the the screen up there rapping. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> They're just cheering for the sake of cheering. Okay, I, we don't need to continue watching this thing because honestly, I need to pause to do any kind of comment on this. You need to be able to hear the sound system. And here's the thing. Stadiums suck for acoustics. You pay a few thousand dollars to go see the halftime show. You're there for the game. Sure, the halftime show is cool to say it was there, but all these people that are up here are just like, okay, whatever. And it's not because they don't like the artists. I mean, believe me, back in the day when I was in high school, Dre and Snoop, when, when Dre released The Chronic and Snoop released Doggy Style, those two albums were like constantly being played by me in my car and, and pretty much all of my friends. It was like not a bad song on those albums. They were amazing, especially what they did for, for hip hop and bringing it to the mainstream. I tell you, those were amazing albums. And these two guys are absolute legends. But here's the thing. When you play any kind of music inside of a stadium, what are stadiums? They're big, spacious things that are full of hard surfaces. It's got, you know, this one right here, you can see the roof. It's got a reflective roof. All of these concrete surfaces and everything are going to be reflecting sounds all over the place. The speaker system is loud enough to, to go in there, but there's so much echo. There's so much reverb. And if you're not directly in front of the speakers, you're not going to be able to get most of the mids and highs. You're going to hear nothing but bass. Do, 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 do. I mean, who wants to listen to just that? And plus, you're far away from the action. You're not going to be able to, to get a, the full impression of the performance. So, I mean... It's great to say you were there and you saw the halftime show live along with the game, but when you spend a few, you know, thousand dollars for tickets, don't go see a concert at a stadium and expect it to sound good because it's not going to. It doesn't matter if you're paying to see your favorite band, it's not going to sound good if it's at a stadium. Okay, so we have ourselves. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Audio 101 where we teach you how to do things. Correct. Wait, uh, hold Today, on a second. Was that an audio cable he was just coiling over his arm? And if we've been going around here in Muncie, Indiana, 
You notice most of the speakers were on mic level last week, and that is incorrect. Okay. So oh, 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 oh. I, I, I'm having a hard time getting over that intro. He's an audio guy, but he's wrapping any cable over his arm like that? This is your first impression of this dude? Okay, to his point, though, I'm, you know what? I'm going to skip ahead. I don't even want to hear what this guy has to say. I'll tell you what you need to know about those speakers. Let me, let me, see, let me see if at the end of this thing he goes back to quilling over his arm. But here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to trust anything this guy says. And I'm going to tell you right now the answer to what his thing. He's talking about speakers going in mic versus line level. Now, if you go straight from a microphone into a speaker, that's mic level. If you go into any kind of a mixer or something like that, it goes out line level. It's already been amplified at that point. You don't need to re-amplify it or turn it back into mic level just to amplify it again. Mic levels are very, very low in voltage. So by the time it sends through an analog voltage basically going to the speaker it doesn't need to reamplify you don't need to go amplify a microphone then drop it down again just to reamplify it later once it's a line level it's going to be much more resilient to any kind of interference in cables and that kind of thing just do that okay i got to see the end of this video I have a microphone plugged in here all right so anyway join us again in a couple weeks you go back to the what what is this cable is that it looks like a power cable. At least it's that. I mean, even then, you do. He might as well chain an XLR cable. I mean, this is this is it. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. This is bad. Okay, well, <laughs> oh man, didn't take long to get right into this one, did it? <sighs> Bless his heart. If you live in the South and you know that phrase, you know what that means. If not, look it up. Bless his heart. He is cleaning an amplifier. No. Yeah, that is not the way you... Uh, nope. It's not the way you clean it. <laughs> the soap is just draining out of the thing. Oh, no. <laughs> this is totally wrong. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what this one's going to be. Is that a cable? That's, you don't use those things. Don't use those things to wrap up and wrangle a cable. Okay. Poor guy. Poor guy. It's, ew, there's some things, it, it, there's, you need to stop it. Hold the thing or something like that. He's just spinning around. Look at the cable. Look at the cable. It's kinking all the way up. That's how you, you would unkink a cable, uh, you know, by doing it in, uh, no, 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 no. Poor guy. Oh, joy. Another vertical video from, it says Jamaica. So this is another TikTok vertical video. And, and this is a DJ mixing from phones. Is he pausing the music to talk over it? Is that what's going on? Okay, is he playing... Uh, Oh, jeez, he's just playing random sound effects. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that, buddy. You gotta let the music play, like that Shannon song. No, <laughs> that's not what you want to do. Just talk it over everything. Hit, Let the music play, and then, like they do on the radio. You gotta let it play, and then at the end of the, the song, when there's no longer the, the, the words, the vocals, that's when you lead out or something like that. You don't just play random sound effects over it all the time just to do it. <sighs> Sorry, dude. No. Oh, I know this video. Hold on a second. This is from a Michael Bay movie. I think they. I think somebody said that this this dude here on the camera is Michael Bay. I'm not 100% sure. I remember seeing this posted a little while ago and said this was on the set of a Michael Bay movie. And this was in a forum talking about film safety. And this is one of those videos that annoyed me when I saw it because of what you're about to see. Yeah, you just blast a vehicle, have it spinning towards the crew, and then have a, a, an ambulance going straight towards the dolly track and the camera and everything. And you notice what happens here. In addition to the vehicle that goes flying into the air right here and goes flying, then the ambulance goes right toward the camera. 
and it could have hit the camera and it could have hit the crew members and that kind of thing. Those kind of things really irritate me. No. All right. We got ourselves an interview here for the NBA playoffs, it looks like. And he's... Ah. Uh, <laughs> it looks like someone needs a sound guy here. <laughs> <laughs> that probably got pinched. It probably just the, the XLR cable was probably in there. It got pinched, and because it was he was yanking it, it pressed the cable. You know, the cable release. You know, <laughs> it's he needs a sound guy. I'm available. No, this is going to kill me. We're 40 seconds into a 3 minute and 48 second long video. This dude's going to kill me. Oh, no. That was awesome, though. I must say, this dude here, I think I found a new hero. I remember seeing this video recently. This is obviously a small village someplace, and they don't have a lot of money. This, this dude here, he's performing... All this gear has basically been put together. You see how dusty and old beat up it is? These people don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of resources. Even the background, the building's falling apart and stuff like that. This guy here, if you look at his left hand, he's missing a hand. It's obviously... They pulled together their research, resources here to... So you really can't make fun of people in a small town because, you know, we all have it good in this country. Not all countries have that. These people are, are you know, having fun... I'm all for that. I mean, I, I I love that they're doing this and just having fun, putting on a show and a performance, and everyone's going to be getting into it, and he's going to smoke in the middle of it. More power to him. All hey, right. Mom, how's it going? Oh. Yeah. Still can't get it off? No. I remember Can this I one. Her? This is what happens when you wrap a cable over your arm because it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So it's not going to release very easy. It gets tighter with every single coil, and she obviously... Yeah, she's she basically did this over and over and over again and it's gotten it so tight it's it's grabbed her arm. Now I got it. Idiot. Jesus Christ. You didn't even wrap it good either. What the man? You're you're horrible. Horrible contractor you would make. Well, I mean, she tried. And that's the thing. I don't I don't understand. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't know why people always seem to go over the shoulder with it. I could easily say she got what she deserved. She won't do that again. Next time, it's going to be her husband that has to do it, or whoever this guy was. He's going to be wrapping all the cables in that house forevermore. All right, so we got ourselves another D. Is it K? Oh, no. Look at those meters. DJ Redline. They're not even going up and down. They're not bouncing at all. Yikes. How does it even sound that good for being redlined? All right. So he's got himself a skewer of meat. And he's putting it on, what is that? There's electrodes connected up to it, and there's a whole bunch of meat. Man, he's going to make me hungry. It's 4.20 a.m. <laughs> Great time. And uh, he is, whoa, wait a minute, that sounded kind of cool. What is he doing? Is, is it rotating or is it, I can't tell if he's actually rotating it with, every spin or if it's just kind of bopping and shaking a little bit it looks like it's rotating I don't know what's look at all that what is this okay now he's inserting in what was it? he had gloves on oh, there's coals under it now oh let's cook the meat with some music now oh yes come on cook that meat oh Cook it, cook it, cook the meat, cook the meat, cook the meat. Cook it, cook it, cook it. Oh, look at the smoke. He's taking the meat away. Don't leave with the meat, buddy. I, I, I mean, cook the meat and then come back with it. But don't just leave. The meat must be eaten. And it's way too much for this dude. 
This makes me happy, though. This is an exciting video. He's going to be cooking meat, and I got to see it. Yes, look at the meat. Is it spinning? He's seasoning the meat. Oh, I like that one. We had a truck following us. Oh. Um, oh, just, I know what this video is. This from Expendables 3. All right, let him set it up for it. I'm going to hit pause in a second here. We did a run through. Let watch this part. Okay. He just got through saying his brakes did not work. Now, here's one of those things that is a safety related thing on set that drives me crazy. Oh my gosh, the actors, the actors, the actors. Okay. I understand it. Jason is driving this vehicle. I've worked with Jason. He's cool. He's great. I, I, I enjoyed him in Snatch, The Transporter, all those movies. I've worked with him a couple of times. I like him. But to me, when they make these videos and they talk about, watch him, he crashes over the side into the water here. And watch this, the vehicle crashes and goes into the water. And then, oh my gosh, because- I was just sitting there like, oh my God, I just watched the person die. I don't think I so. Do. Like, I don't, I don't think it's what he thinks it is. is that they fly over, they fly over here and they look over the side and they look at the footage and they see all these crew members and they see Jason. Now all these crew members are in there with Jason and get him out. Okay, I get it. He's a big name star. And then later, they're talking about how awesome it is that he goes back. Listen. What really makes Jason incredible is that he went, changed his clothes, popped right back in the truck. Yeah, so he basically changes his clothes and comes back over there and does it again. And they praise him for it. I want you to watch this video again and, and you can see why this annoys me as a crew member, okay? Because when you watch this, watch this footage. Wait a minute, look at this. He is going right towards a camera being pushed by a dolly grip. Watch this right there. You see it on the screen? Ah, of course, my, phone, my camera glitches at the exact moment. Watch right now. He's going. So basically, the vehicle that he was driving, when the brakes failed, he didn't stop, and he goes right into the dolly grip, he goes right into the camera operator and pushes both of them into the water. So to me, this is not one of those moments where you say, oh my gosh, poor Jason, he was in a vehicle. Look at this right here. He hit crew members and pushed them into the water. And the divers jump in there and pull out the star first from a vehicle. Now, I get it. I get it. I understand why they did that. They pulled him out of a vehicle because, you know, he could have drowned in the vehicle at the bottom or whatever else. He comes up to the surface and stuff. But look at all these crew members in there. They're jumping in there to save him. And there's not any talk in this video from crews or anything like that about the crew members that he drove into. I get it. I get, I get the reason why this is a big deal and why it was awesome that Jason comes back up and he changes clothes and he comes out and continues to shoot. Great work ethic, and I understand that. But I want to hear about the crew members that were hit. Are they okay? You don't hear about that, though. It's not about the crew members. Guess what? If one of them was hurt and went to the hospital, hey, is anybody available to come in? We had a, you know, a camera operator that couldn't finish the day. Can somebody come in immediately and fill in? We have an extra camera. Really disappointing to me because crew members work their tails off to, you know, for much longer hours than the actors work. And yet we're basically expendable. Okay, so we have a editing sound. Oh, we're going to see some sound design. Okay, these are cool because, all right, here's the, here's the difference between sound effects, like when you put in sound effects and sound design. Okay, sound effects, if you place those in there, you're basically a sound editor. You're editing together pre-recorded sounds. If you're a sound designer, you have to take something that doesn't exist in the real world and figure out how it sounds and build up the layers and really piece it together. So they have a transformer. You know it's metal. You know it's a big thing and whatever, but there's a lot of stuff happening there. So they're going to be showing us how they basically put together the sounds for the transformers, you know, fully when they change sounds. So he's basically got a microphone he's close recording it he's going to be banging different sounds the clanking you see all these different sounds Ooh, that was a good sound scrapes and this kind of stuff because you could imagine very easily 
Wow, that sounded kind of cool. Didn't exactly sound like a transformer, though. That sounded better. Wow, listen to that. <laughs> so he's... But you know what? These are really cool to me because it shows the process, how he layers on top of it all the different sounds to make this machine. The layers are what makes it really amazing. Layering together the sound because you know this is a machine. You know that it's not just one or two pieces. That there, that metal, if you were to twist and torque around metal, it's going to be making all kinds of terrible noises. And that's what it sounds like. It's awesome. Especially by the time you add music and stuff over it, it gets really exciting. Oh no. So he's cleaning a CDJ. He's cleaning two CDJs and a Pioneer mixer. This is a four channel mixer. That system back in the day, is that a CD? It looks like a CDJ 500. That was one of the old school ones. Back in the 90s, those things were like the top of the line. And that was the mixer with it. And he's mixing it. He's spraying it down with water. I mean, it's disappointing to me because I tell you, back in the day, I would have killed for that system. What is this? Is that the heart? Is that hard drives? What is that? It amps? I can't even tell what it is. I don't know, but it makes me sad. So yeah, there are some videos for you from Facebook. That's the kind of stuff that we see on Facebook though, isn't it? Many of them came from TikTok. We had all kinds of things from Foley sessions to bad technique to poor singing to non-existent performances that just don't make sense, just all kinds of things. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I don't know if my reaction videos are really all that entertaining, but hey, I'm enjoying doing them. If there's anything you would like to watch me react to that's a that's perhaps a tutorial or something that's sound related, by all means, send a link down in the description. I'd love, uh, not the description, in the comments. That's what you have access to. So send me some links down in the comments below or shoot me an email at the email address in the comment, in, in in the description. I'll get this right eventually. But regardless, let me go ahead and end this video. Thanks for watching this episode of Sound Speech. Be sure to tune in the future for more reaction videos, interesting things, sound related, and of course, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.